Five. Thanks, Vance. We just need that little bit of magic there. We got it. Okay, so here's what we know. Let's go ahead and write some things down. Let's see, where's my black pen? I don't know. Well, I've got a green pen. Don't want green. I want black. All right, let's see what this does. Right. So today, 9.28. So what we want to do is we want to look at polynomial graphs and all their characteristics, okay? Okay, so let's look at polynomial graphs and all their characteristics, okay? So first of all, let me put up two graphs that you may or may not know, but if I put a y equals x to the zero power, oh, that looks lousy, I'll do it again, y equals x to the zero power and y equals x to the one power, because it's going to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, okay? Um, this graph looks like this. This graph looks like this, right? X to the zero, anything to the zero power is one. It will always be one, so it's called a constant function. It is a polynomial because it has a whole number x, okay? This one right here, x to the zero, anything to the zero power is one. It's going to always be one, so it's called a constant function, okay? It is a polynomial exponent of zero, okay? y equals x to the 1 is just start at 0, up 1 over 1, up 1. It's a straight line. This one's a linear. That one's called a constant function. That's called a linear function. And again, it is a polynomial because it has a whole number exponent, okay? Now, degree, degree 2, all right, I think you guys kind of know with these, and I'm just going to do general shapes. Okay, it's a parabola, right? Thumbs up, you guys agree? I agree. Now, the parabola could be anywhere. It could be upside down. We could shift it up and down, but that's a general shape of a parabola, okay? Um, an x cube can look like this, okay? And there are variations of it. Um, give me a second to use some variations real quick. I'll give you some variations of it. But that's the one I want to look at. But give me a second to show you some variations. Um, real quickly, it could look like this. Okay, you with that? Um, let's see, where's the, here it is. Aren't you just whatever, like, the number of, like, bodies, essentially, it's one less than just Dang, you girl, you're taking away my thunder. Yes, nice job. Uh, that's what I'm waiting for is I want, yeah, yeah. Okay, and, or it could also look like this. Um, it could go like this, right? Yeah, stop being smart. Right, that's okay, right? Thank you, perfect. Or, but what's really weird is actually too hard it could look like this. Uh, and that one almost confuses what you said, doesn't it, okay? Um, but it looks like this only has really one, right? Okay, but we're going to look at the general one because what Lauren is doing is she's actually answering some questions I'm going to ask later. Thank you, Lauren. That's awesome. No, see? You're ahead of me. Um, X to the fourth could look like something. Could, could look like this. Could have this shape to it. Right? And there's a bunch of variations of that as well. Degree five. Okay, let's see, let's do what Lauren said. She said that it's going to have, degree five is going to have four bumps. Does that make sense? Four bumps. So degree five could look like this. That could be degree five. And there's lots of different variations of that. Degree six could look like this. So Lauren said degree six, you should have five bumps, right? This one's got one, two, three, four bumps. This one could be degree six, you could have five bumps. Okay, thank you, Lauren. 
conclusion. I heard one. I heard one conclusion there. Nice job. Sorry to say you sealed my thumb better, but you had it already, didn't you? Um, what Lauren said is agree to one bump, right? Agree to three, two bumps, max man, two, four, right? So agree one less bump, okay? Now what else do you see? What else do you see? Yeah, Ellie? They kind of all have a similar shape. They do have a similar shape. They're very curvy. I agree with that. Um, except for these, that one is straight and that one's a straight, but they're all definitely curvy, aren't they? I agree with that. Okay, yep, they've got a local min, like a local max, um, generally, yes. Um, tell me about zeros. Yes, Ellie. No, you can't answer. You already know this. <laughs> so, that's it. Degree zero. How many intercepts does, 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 how many X intercepts? Zero. Degree one, how many intercepts? Degree two. Degree three. One, two, three. Degree four. Degree five. Degree six. Now watch this. Totally correct. So let's rephrase it. Let's rephrase that because I like what you said. So if it's the degree always tells you the zeros, correct? And watch this graph. Watch, 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 watch this graph. It still has two roots, but they're imaginary, right? Yeah. Check this one out. It still has three roots, one real, one real, and two imaginary. And with the four, you can do all sorts of things, right? So the four could be like this. Four imaginary. Four imaginary, right? But what do we know about the odd degrees? Tell me about roots. What do you know about the odd degrees? Oh. Yes, Ellie. They have to have at least one root. Girl, you're on fire. You could, as soon as she said, she said if it's an odd root, they always have to have one real root. Because what do we know about end behavior? What do we know about end behavior? So if you're an even, if you're even, what do we know about end behavior? They both go up or down. Yes, yes. Nice. There you go, Carly. Yes, my girl. So if it's an even, they'll both finish to infinity. Or both ends to negative infinity. Agree? Same thing with this one, right? Even? Carly, right? Yes. So they'll both finish either to positive infinity or to negative infinity. But the odds have to go like this, always, right? And if that's the case, then it comes back to what you said. If the odds have end behavior like this, then they're always going to have at least one real root. Nice job. You guys are seeing it. Okay, cool. All right? Awesome. Let's write some of that stuff down. Okay? Let's write some of that stuff down because there's our conclusions, right? All right, so conclusions. I like the fact that if we'll have the degree is the same, the, sorry you guys, the, the same as the number of roots, right? So that means two roots, always. Three roots, always. Four roots, right? Degree five, five roots. Six degrees, six roots, and so forth and so on. Now, sometimes they're imaginary and real. You can have a combination, depending on how the graph is, where, for instance, This is a fun one, okay? okay? The way I drew it, it has four real roots, right? Four real, real numbers, right? If I drew it like this, it can have two real roots, right? And two imaginary. Okay? I can draw it like this. Mm -hmm. 
It still has four real roots, but these are what we call double roots. It touches twice at the same spot. That's a double root. touches twice at the same spot. And we're going to look at those, OK? That's a, called a double root. Wait, what do you mean by third? Is that what it's called? Right? Oh, like over here in the suburbs? Yeah. Oh, okay. It happened twice. We're going to see that, OK? I'm going to show that in the notes. So probably the same thing. Right. Okay. right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let me keep going. Now, how does the leading coefficient affect the graph? Okay. So if if a is greater than zero, that's the leading coefficient. It will always end at negative or at positive infinity. If a is less than zero, it will always end at negative infinity. Okay. Slide this down for a second. Right, I'm going to add, add some things to your notes. Here, a's got to be positive. It could be could be y equals a two x squared minus four. I don't know, but it's a positive number. Where's it end? Infinity. Does that make sense? What about this one? Positive. It could be y equals two x cubed blah blah blah. Right? What about this one? Right. Could be y equals two x the fourth blah blah blah. Right? How about this one? Right, could be y equals say three x to the fifth blah blah blah. But what about this one? So it's gonna have to be a y equals some negative two x to the sixth blah blah blah. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. It's that easy. It's that easy. Okay, now moving on. You guys know this already, don't you? So now we're gonna graph this one without a calculator. Can. You don't need a calculator to graph this one. Okay, so first of all, what I'd like to know are the zeros. First, to graph it, first find the zeros. So my zeros are, it's already factored, it's already factored. I'll go 0 equals x plus 2, 0 equals x minus 1. And 0 equals x minus 4, okay? So 1, 0 is at negative 2. The other 0 is at positive 1. And the third 0 is at positive 4, okay? Alright, I'm going to have a negative 2, 1, and a 4, and a negative 2, and a 1. So I know this. In this graph, here, here, and here. All right? You don't need a calculator. We just need the general shape. Are you with me so far? What is the end behavior? If you were to multiply x times x times x, what do you get? Next is it a positive x cube or a negative x cube? Oh, positive. So if it's positive, what can you tell me about from here? What am I going to do? Totally right. So the graph's going to look like this. Right? Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Well, it was easy. You already know this. You just have to put it down in notes, right? And if you want to put it in a calculator and take a look at it, you can. But I guarantee, I don't care about the y values. I just want the general shape. Thumbs up on that? Pretty easy. OK, ready to turn the page? OK. Double root, OK? So let's first find our zeros. 
So I'm going to have 0 equals negative x. I'm going to have 0 equals x minus 2 twice. And 0 equals x plus 1, okay? Now we're going to have what we call a double root. We're going to get the same answer twice. And it's going to be really easy to explain, okay? So, if we solve it, 1, 0 is 0. I mean negative x. So, I mean, if you solve that, you just get 0. Every degree, you bring over the negative. You get positive 2. Then you get positive 2 again. Then you get negative 1. Okay, so here's what I'm going to have on my graph. I'm going to have... 1, 2, negative 1. I'm going to have a 0 at 0. Okay. It has to go through this value twice. The way it's going to do it is it's going to go through it again. I'll show you. Before we do that, what's end behavior? What's my end behavior? Um, so it's going to be negative. You see the negative, right? So I know for sure it's got to finish, it's got to finish from here. Does that make sense? End behavior. So my graph's going to go like this. Everybody watch. Everybody watch. I go through two. I go through two again. Want to see it again? I'm going to go through two. I go through two again. Okay, you can go through it, but you don't really go through it, right? Go through it, you get to it. A double root is like a tangent, or as kids like to call it, touch and go, touch and go, right? Go through it twice, you go through it twice, go through, through it, back down. Okay, so we can draw it in. And you can put it on your calculator and look at it, but this is what it's going to do. It is going to look like this. How's that? Okay, example three. Well, same thing. First, let's find our zeros. So I'm going to factor it. To get my zeros, I can factor this. This is not that hard to factor. Set it equal to zero. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x. Um, what do they have in common? An x. So I'm going to common factor out an x. x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay. What are the multiples 8 that make a negative 2? Yep. I'm going to go negative 4, positive 2. Everybody agree with that? That's sloppy. Sorry, it's so sloppy. Um, if I do my mini equations, I get 0. I get positive 4, right? I get negative 2. So... Why don't you for a minute try and graph it without me, and then I'll put up what I have, okay? Let's see if you can do it. So here's my zero. I want to do is talk about end behavior, okay? So if you take calculus, they're going to want you to write end behavior in a certain way, okay? Here's how you do it in calculus. You can write this. You cannot get to infinity. You can't. There's no such number. It's only an idea. It's like love, okay? Love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Please say that by a single. It's just like a love. It's not real. It's just, an, just an idea. <laughs> anyway, so you can't get to infinity, but as x, now watch. Everybody's got to watch. Everybody's got to watch my hand. I'm going to watch both hands, okay? As x, as x goes to infinity, where's the graph going? Oh. So we're going to say as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. Does that make sense? So as x approaches infinity, then, then y approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, again, watch my hand. Watch my hand. Okay, we're talking about the x ray, right? So as x, as x approaches infinity, where's the y value going? Negative infinity. Right, you see I did that? Right? Okay. Wouldn't it be as negative x approaches infinity? Well, it becomes, you could say negative, don't say negative. Don't, I mean, because, I mean, no, don't just, no, just say x, as the x values become towards negative, which does make them negative values, I agree. Then, y approaches negative infinity. Right, Brittany? They're going to have to know how to say that, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have, and a lot of times, they when you say y, they'll say f of x approaches infinity. f of x approaches negative infinity. Okay. Got it. Okay, that's all I have. Homework. Oh, you guys probably want to work on your balloons, right? <laughs>